So we'll do a little bit of introductions again, you know, and then we'll get started. Vishal Jain from NVIDIA. Hey, I'm Justin York from Google. Chaudhary Madhukuri from Microsoft. So I went through motivations in previous talk. I'm going to do a short version this time. We have a loaded deck for this presentation. I don't want to chew up too much time. Primarily, what we are trying to do here is left shift GPU integration uh, or adoption at hyperscalers. What it really boils down to in terms of manage management interfaces is how can one perform, say, firmware update? How can one collect attestation report? How can one collect telemetry? Right? What are the SLAs uh, associated with these things? We wanted to make these use cases concrete ahead of time so that hyperscalers can, ahead of time, build all the infrastructure they need, whether it be BMC code, a root of trust code, or you know some uh, external orchestrator that has to be uh, you know developed for a uh, cluster level uh, you know management. So all those things can be done ahead of time. What we have figured out is we we put all the use cases together and we figured out that existing and upcoming DMTF, uh, Redfish. PMCI technologies, they are good as building blocks for us to uh, standardize, right? What is missing is some of the use cases that, that behind using those protocols, some of the SLAs. For example, uh, for use case example, Darpana is here, I'm looking at her, uh, my prime uh, customer here, right? So, we can say SPDM can be used for attestation, right? But attestation means different things in different um, uh, cycles. You do pre-boot attestation. You do continuous attestation. They have different aspect with respect to timing, right? With respect to readiness of the solution, uh, say GPU at this time. So we we make it as a black and white requirement for uh, vendors to comply to, right? Same thing with telemetry. Power telemetry is more latency sensitive than some, say, error counter telemetry, right? So how can we make sure we, we, we speed up those required telemetry and the SLAs can be met, right? So all in all, what we are trying to do here is take existing protocols and put profiles around it. And those profiles gives vendors a framework to make sure they are meeting requirements that hyperscalers have in place, right? And with um, theory of operations on how these features are going to be used and why, I think it is a engineering teams at vendors have a better chance of developing the right solution rather than just doing something, um, you know, out of you know nowhere, I guess. So with that, I'll hand over to Choudhury for uh, taking us through some profiles we have uh, worked on. OK, as um, uh, Vishal said, so we are going to define a set of profiles and how do we manage the hardware, right? And here, we are talking about two main form factors. One is uh, discrete accelerators, what we call. These are the typical PCI adapters. And the second type of form factor is UBB, universal baseboard based uh, accelerators that Justin is going to cover. So on the uh, discrete cards, these are, as I said, it's standard PCI adapters. These are connected to the host BMC using the ITC bus right now. And in future, we are hoping they move to higher bandwidth buses like I3C or USB. Okay. On top of that, we are saying each of these adapters should have some kind of inventory information so that during initialization, we go and check what kind of adapter, what kind of vendor. So for that, we are saying you should follow the IPMI FRU format. And then how do we manage these devices? What are the protocols? The transport protocol we are using, we are mandating is MCTP. And the application protocol is PLDM for 
uh, monitoring and control and firmware updates and SPDM for security like device attestation, uh, firmware uh, management. Those are the things we'll do through SPDM. That is what we are asking for the uh, discrete devices. And uh, just we'll go through about the UBB. Yeah, and so the uh, kind of the second form factor is the UBB, and an example of that would be uh, what many of us have seen is an HGX chassis. Um, the UBB uh, anatomy of the UBB is that there's usually a set of accelerator uh, devices, GPUs. Uh, there's standard baseboard components that you'd have to you know keep the board running and and working. And lastly, there's um, an accelerator management controller. And that connects inside the hyperscaler environment to some sort of management control plane of our own. And what we're going to talk about is how the Redfish interface over a network um, enables the hyperscalers to manage you know, these UBBs. So uh, a quick you know, kind of status of what we've been doing. Uh, we have put out a 0.5 specification uh, through the OCP, a draft, and that's available, publicly available. You can go download that and take a look, and we'll be referring to that numerous times today. Um, from there, we are working on a 0.9 spec, you know, ultimately heading to 1.0. And so if we kind of look at the areas that we covered in the spec, FRU requirements were covered in 0.5. Uh, we're going to tweak things a little bit in 0.9, but fundamentally, you know, we think we have a good handle on that. The MCTP profile is kind of the same. We're going to be making some enhancements based on feedback we've gotten, based on, you know, additional thinking. The SPDM profile, pretty much should carry over. I'll talk about that more later. PLDM profile, same thing. We think what we have in 0.5 is pretty close. Um, and so that should go into 0.9 uh, in the same way. And Redfish is an area where we expect to make a lot more changes in the 0.9 spec, a lot more additions. Um, and so specifically, we, we talk about Redfish in two ways. There's some implementation notes. Uh, you know, the Redfish protocol or standard describes redfish, and we're prescribing behavior on top of that standard. Uh, so you'll see some implementation notes that that hyperscalers, you know, have to help us, you know, accelerate uh, deployment of these GPU systems. And then lastly, the usage of redfish interoperability profiles. In this case, specifically around the UBB interface between the hyperscaler management controller and the accelerator management controller. So the kind of the starting point for manageability for uh, hyperscalers is the FRU. We depend on the contents of the FRU to help us understand what devices that we're managing. And for that reason, we've come together and decided on a set of requirements um, on top of IPMI FRU that we want to outline so that when the suppliers produce a new design for us, they don't have to wonder. They can fill in what we need, and you know, we're ready to go. So we put some requirements around what data fields, uh, areas we need to have contents in, when they need to have contents in, and then just a few other specifics for those use cases where there's a EEPROM, not all use cases obviously, but for those where there's an EEPROM, we have kind of some additional you know, requirements that we go into. So ultimately, I'd refer you to our 0.5 doc to see the detailed view of this. Um, but I'll just kind of flash a little bit of what we have on the right side of the slide and just give you a sample of some of the uh, things that we've talked about uh, in the case where an EEPROM is a present. So like, if there's an EEPROM, we'd like it to be a dedicated device, not something that we have to marshal access to, because that just leads to complexity, lots of extra you know, failure modes. And another case is we'd like to standardize on the two-byte uh, offsets, which usually comes with 512-byte or larger EEPROMs. Okay. Now I'm going to go through the MCTP profile. You'll see this common theme we are going to talk about various profiles. Is it MCTP profile, PLDM profile, or Redfish profile? As Justin was saying earlier, the standards describe how to implement, but the profiles prescribe what we want, okay? 
In this, in this respect, for MCDP, we are concentrating mainly on three themes. One is MCDP VDM extensions. As these accelerators are rapidly evolving and the, the, the manufacturer has their unique features and new implementations, right? The PLDM or the protocols are still lagging behind. So there are a lot of things we cannot do using the standard protocol. So this VDM extension will help fill that gap. So we are defining two VDM extensions. One VDM extension, which is already covered in the point spec we published, is for bulk data transfer. Okay. So this common header has a command field. And we are saying we are going to reserve around 100 commands, which these extended commands are common across all vendors. And the remaining commands are vendor specific. They can define their own uh, commands and their payload. That's what is already covered in the point spec, five spec. There is a second set of VDM we are going to propose as part of the point nine spec that is going to come in around December is how do we transfer events, right? PLDM already supports eventing, but there are a lot of bulk data we want to transfer with these events, right? Those are the things we want to cover in the second VDM uh, 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 command we are going to describe. And the second set of thing is, uh, we are going to, the, the, in the point five spec covers, how do we assign the endpoint IDs, who is the bus master, right? Who is the topmost bus master? Those kind of details and how the endpoint ID flow goes through and how do we assign, how do you discover, those kind of details. And the third is, right now the spec already says these are the standard mandatory commands. We want to extend that. The, the existing mandatory commands does not call cover all our use cases. So we are saying add these additional four or five mandatory commands. Those are the things this profile will describe and the document has all the details. So here I'm going to go to a little bit more details. Like as we are saying, on these designs, right, there's a host BMC, which is doing all the monitoring. So that host BMC acts as the topmost bus owner who's doing all the discovery and doing the endpoint ID assignment, okay? Then within the, and the second point we are saying is, how often do we discover this whole, pro, uh, do the discovery process? Typically we do an every AC power on, on every DC cycle we do a rediscovery, and if the BMC get reset, it does a, uh, one more discovery. And in future, if there are any hot plug devices, and we do go and discover their hot plug devices also. That, that is the discovery process and what time we are going to do a discovery. In addition to that, as I said, we are mandating additional uh, mandatory commands like get UUID, get MCTP, VDM, tie and supported, and uh, hot edition and MCTP, those kind of stuff like prepare for endpoint ID and, and discovery. Those are the additional uh, mandatory commands we are asking to implement, okay? In addition to that, you can see a flow chart is not clear here, but you can go to the spec that clearly follows. What is the flow on every discovery, what flow? We say go and get the version number, get the UID, and we set the endpoint ID, then we check it as a bridge device, then we allocate a pool of endpoint IDs and assign to it. That is a general flow we follow on every discovery. That's what is described in the spec. So, uh, you know, one of the things that's really important to us is that we can build a good security story around the parts that we're bringing to the data center. And we want to make sure that from the GPU type devices that we're getting kind of the same, you know, setting the same expectations. So again, we've got a profile, SPDM profile for GPUs that we put together. And what we did is, you know, we, we took the standard and we just, uh, well, backing up, SPDM gives us a way to authenticate components, to measure the firmware, also to create secure channels between different components. 
and what we've done is we've listed out a set of required commands, capabilities, and algorithms that need to you know, be present on this class of device so that we can ensure that we can you know, automatically do the SPDM uh, control and, and ensure that we have the right uh, security stance. Uh, we did that work within our working group to start, and then we worked with the OCP security working group and um, kind of handed that off. And the work that we're doing will feed into a future version of the attestation of system component requirements and recommendation stock. But we've also uh, put some of the information in our 0.5 spec just so you can you know, get an early look at it. Then we go to the uh, PLDM profile, again as a common theme. So here we are again prescribing what we want the vendors to implement, right? And in PLDM, the thing we are saying is we are concentrating on two, type two for monitoring and control, and type four firmware updates. These are the two things we are concentrating on. In addition to that, right now, as I said, right, the accelerators are evolving pretty fast, and a lot of things are not covered by the PLDM. So we are hoping with, the, I think, PLDM for accelerator is out there. With that and PLDM for file IO, which is going to come pretty soon, we can do a comprehensive management. Once we have these in place, then maybe we don't need to do too much of OEM extensions like MCTP extensions. So, and the third one we are covering in this is what are the specific PLDM commands, right? We are concentrating on three areas. One is sensors, okay? What are the sets of sensors, a minimum set of sensors we are expecting within each of these devices? And the second is what are the effectors we want them to support, like for setting the power cap or resetting the device or resetting the defaults, those kind of stuff. And the third is we are talking about what kind of PDRs we want. PLDM is a vast spec and we don't want everything in that to be implemented, but these are the minimum set of things we are asking the vendors to implement. This goes into the next details. So if you see in a typical, when we talk about PLDM, mainly we are talking about the discrete device. This is a PCI adapter, okay? And here we say, how do we represent the, the device? And how do we represent various components? Unlike other PCI adapters, these accelerators are more complex. They have way more components. For example, GPU, retimers, PL, uh, FPGAs, or PCI switches, right? So the document covers how do you represent them? How do you do association between these devices, okay? And within this uh, component, what are the minimum set of sensors, like the temperatures, the VRs, the power, those kind of stuff, okay? and it can be management control if there is a man dedicated management controller. We are asking them to support a reset to defaults and reset of the management controller. And that is sensors. Now when you come to the effectors, there are a couple of things we are asking, right? One is we should be able to set the power cap. Set the power cap at the device level or set the power cap at the each component level, each GPU of their multiple GPUs, right? In addition to that, the two more items we are asking is reset to defaults. If you want to de decommission the part, right, or re reinsert the part, we want this reset to default, clear all the settings and everything. The same thing for some reason, we think the device is not behaving, we want to reset the controller, we can use this reset uh, uh, effector. So the next set of things is the PDRs. If you go to the PLDM standard, it has a lot of features and capabilities that PCR sub, uh, PDR support. But we are saying these are the three minimum set of PDRs you need to support. One is association PDRs, the second is auxiliary PDRs, which gives the, us the capability to name these various sensors, right? That is the PDR. And the third one, this is uh, important for us, is the, um, what do we call, um, logical association PDRs. The logical association PDRs are useful and in general, right? For example, a BMC is monitoring various sensors on the adapter, okay? And BMC is also doing a thermal control in the system, and it needs some of the temperatures from these adapters, right? But typically with these complex systems, they are like tens of temperature sensors. And we can't use all of them as part of the 
mm, thermal algorithm or uh, fan control. So the logical association PDRs will tell, out of these 100 temperatures, only use these three or these four for your thermal algorithm. So that way, everything is dynamic. We go read all the temperature sensors, we, uh, and we know these four are the ones we want to use in our temperatures. That's where we are going to use the logical association PDRs. Yeah, so you've kind of seen us work on our way up the PMCI stack, and now we'll kind of head over to the Redfish side of things. And again, this applies to the UBB form factor. And um, as we mentioned, one of our requirements is that the UBB form factors have an, an accelerator management controller that presents a Redfish interface. Uh, DMTF Redfish provides you know, resources, schemas, definitions, and the thing is, a lot of it's optional. And so what we want to do is use Redfish interop profiles to put a more concise set of requirements around the Redfish implementations for UBBs. Uh, so it'll be more deterministic, te testable, and predictable uh, between suppliers and even between releases. So a few things we'll kind of talk about is uh, we'll show you kind of a Redfish tree that we've put together using uh, some of the pieces um, of, of the, uh, H, uh, the uh, UBB um, designs. We'll talk to you about a couple of different um, use cases that hyperscalers have for different parts of Redfish, such as the location objects, as well as some examples of RAS error injection that were kind of described in the previous presentation, but you know we'll, we'll throw some Redfish on the screen here. And actually, I'll start with that. So, what we're doing um, is stand in that the RAS uh, presentation that you saw prior to this one is creating standard ways to inject the type of errors that we all need to check for. You've got you know common things like a correctable memory error or even worse the uncorrectable memory error, and it's really hard to capture those in testing. So as we heard in the RAS work stream, we want to make it standard so that we can trigger these type of faults or simulate these type of faults on devices. And uh, for that, we're using Redfish. And so here's an example. This is uh, maybe not legible um, on your well, actually it looks pretty good, uh, but you can refer to our. 0.5 spec and and see a little bit more of a write-up as well as you know the the details on this another uh, set of properties of interest to hyperscalers um, you know we're managing these really large fleets vast fleets and we need to be able to take what we're you know collecting in the middle of our infrastructure monitoring and managing and trace that back to an actual specific piece of hardware when there's a failure. And the way we do that is by using the location uh, sub-properties that are present in most Redfish resources. And specifically, we make a tuple out of some combination of the part location context or the part location and its sub-elements. So it's really important when we get uh, new GPU designs that those are present because we're going to use those. And then, you know, lastly, just the big picture on the Redfish interrupt profile. So um, we are going to, in the 0.9 spec, release a Redfish interoperability profile describing the Redfish properties, required properties and resources for a UBB type device, and we expect to use that to validate, again, incoming releases from suppliers, both on a per product basis, but even on a per release basis, to save time, ensure that what we need to have there for our infrastructure is there, and that you know it, it's uh, something that everybody's kind of on the same page with. So as we are as we are saying, the standard, in particular, Redfish standard is an ocean, right? And everyone can interpret or everyone can implement as they like. But here we are saying, if you are when you are representing an UBB, this is mainly covering the universal base word kind of form factor. This is how you represent the Redfish uh, representation in the Redfish is done. How the hierarchy and various devices are 
uh, uh, represented here are interconnected, okay? This is very important, and this almost resembles the host side BMC representing the host, like how, to, how it represents the CPUs, the memory. Here we are saying, these are the minimum set of things we want you to do, like for example, the system, the chassis, which are almost common, replication, like the host side. But if you go uh, towards the right side, where we want eventing, and mainly the telemetry. Telemetry is very critical, okay? And in the point high spec, we are talking about static MRDs. These UBB designs have hundreds of sensors, and a typical, uh, when we are monitoring, we can't monitor all the sensors as independent URIs or independent requiries. Instead of that, we are saying we can cons consolidate critical temperatures or critical sensors into the static MRDs, and we can do one query, get all the uh, sensor data. So for the 0.5 spec, we are concentrating on static MRDs. And 0.9 spec, we are going to extend, saying that we want to support dynamic MRDs, and also right now, we only support eventing, and in 0.9, we are going to extend for SSE, server-side, server center eventing, right? Right now, we are saying we're going to do polling on the MRDs, but in 0.9 spec in future, we want to move to the server-side SSE, server-side eventing. And this is where we want a lot of feedback from the community. As a lot of speakers are saying, right, we are, we are way early in our, uh, this one, uh, AML uh, uh, development, and this will call for action. And there are a lot of accelerators are rapidly evolving. There are a lot of things we are going to add. So this is where we need feedback. The, the point spec is there out. You can review that and provide feedback to the mailing list. And we are going to, as we said, just now saying, we are going to do 0.9 spec around December time frame. So if you have any feedback, please provide that so that we can incorporate in the next version. Anything you want, guys want to cover? I was just gonna add that we are adding Meta and AMD to our work stream. They've joined us, so um, maybe next year they'll be on stage with us. Great, great, thank you guys. Uh, I know there's some questions, so we'll let, the, let folks get in there, but I'm gonna throw the first one out. So the, uh, so you, you had a bullet that you're aware of the, the work in progress that the DMT have put out for a new fruit format. Please go drive and help on that because that's, uh, uh, the, the IPMI fru is such an ancient format and such rife with uh, uh, very bitwise uh, uh, constructs that are, uh, have outlived their usefulness. So, uh, so we'd love to have some use cases to actually go, you know, be the, be the thing that can go plow that into, the, uh, into some real world, uh, you know, adoption. So I'll let, I'll let Hamill take the first question. <laughs> So I, my question is on that PLDM profile. You, we have DSP twenty sixty one, right? You, you want careful. That is that is a PLDM profile for accelerator. So what maybe what you presented? It's uh, these are good things to feed it back to saying this is what you would like to see. That way you can just uh, refer to that spec and that becomes your PLDM for accelerator. I agree. So we started way early before that was published. We started earlier last week. This will become a companion or some to that profile. It, yeah. Yeah, and there's people that are in our work stream meetings that contributed to that, like uh, Deepak from NVIDIA. So we're very aware of it, and it's top of mind. And we're, we're not going to ignore it. Your um, FRU effort is in conflict with the PCI SIG, has a chapter 12 out of band management chapter that just exited the final review phase that duplicates everything that you're doing for all PCIe cards. You're just targeting certain GPUs through an OCP requirement, and so it's already covered, but we need to merge your effort with that one. I'm the author of it, so um, including those extra attributes. They've created like their own PCI SIG multi-record and all that. It's, it is built on a, uh, IPMI initially multi-record, but then it will extend to uh, PLDM as soon as DMTF is done with that piece. So the same people are working on the same efforts. We need to merge yours so we don't have a fork. So you're saying PCI for the PCI, uh, the FRU contents, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, the PCIe base spec in 
5.0 or 5.2 and 6.2 is adding this outer band management as a framework to pull in what's been 20 years of chaos in terms of the discovery. It includes the fruit information device rules, a much longer set than what you had, as well as uh, the formatting, the formatting rules, and the multi-record and stuff, which will. So we need to. We can get together after this and merge those efforts. Sure. Yeah. How how would that play with the DMTF extending the FRU? It's the same. It'll uh, be it, yeah. It'll be the same. As soon as that's done, the the IPMI will be the first, and then the PLDM will be after that within the same device. But we had to start, and this has already been propagated at like the PCI Chem form factor as a requirement of that FRU for certain out of band advanced features like USB and whatnot. So. That will be good. Yeah. We should we should combine all yeah. of them. Thank you. All right. Great. Uh, great. Thanks, guys.